Okay, if I asked you to define a fragment, what would you, do, what would you define a fragment as with, re, with regards to Android programming? If you had to do it in one sentence. Either way, I think of Android fragment as being a piece of code that gets implemented someplace else. Okay. The, I mean, the word fragment implies, you know, yeah, yeah that it's, it's broken down. So that's a that's a good start. How does a fragment? Okay. How does a fragment? correspond to an activity. to start then. Uh, if I had to define a activity, oh, I'm sorry, a fragment, I would say a fragment is like a little activity, all right, a mini activity. And if I had to say the relation between a fragment and an activity, I would say an activity can contain multiple fragments, okay? Remember, a activity, think of that as we're presenting one screen to the user, all right? We're presenting one screen to the user for them to do something. That's an activity. That one screen, however, can have a couple little mini activities in it, a couple little sections, which each are pretty much self-contained, all right? And the reason why we do this is mostly to take uh, advantage of larger screens real estates. So let's look at this again, the, the application we looked at last time. And we'll do that from this perspective of looking at what's the activity, what is the fragment. So if I go and run this, OK, I'll, I'll turn on in a minute. It's actually still compiling. really thinking about it. All right. This is a activity, right? It's an activity that is presented to us. It's one screen that it presents that's presented to us for us to do something with. All right. And in this case, the activity is a game. So we can play the game. All right. This activity contains one fragment. It contains the game fragment. And the game fragment is self-contained, all right? In other words, everything about the game fragment is in the game fragment. 
that's going to become important later on because we're going to actually arrange it so we're going to have two fragments on the screen when we have more space. So if we go here, we're viewing another fragment within another activity. We start another activity. What's another activity? Oh, what's an activity? It's the screen that we present to the user. So we present the screen to the user, and it has another little piece of functionality in it that's self-contained. All right? So this is an, is an activity that contains a fragment, and this is an activity that contains a fragment. All right? Why did we just not include, why do we even bother having with fragments then? Why couldn't we just put all that code in the activity? Why we bother with fragments is because we can do this. As I turn it to get more real estate, and this is in landscape mode, I now have one activity that has two fragments. So it's a more efficient use of the space. All right? The way I coded it, each piece is sort of self-contained and has its own logic and does its own thing. All right? So settings fragment does its thing. Game fragment does its thing. I rotate it. Game fragment, setting fragment. So these fragments can work whether they're in separate activities or whether they're part of the same activity. All right? And by breaking the application down into fragments, that allows us to have a more efficient use of the screen because under the circumstances, we can pop on the activity multiple fragments. All right? But each one of them, more or less, is like a little mini activity because it's self-contained. We can do everything on this, we can do everything in the activity here, so I can make a selection that I want two choices, or I want to only do Africa, Asia, Africa and Asia, let's say. So I can do the settings in a self-contained manner where it displays and takes up the entire activity. The game takes up the entire activity. Or when I have more real estate, I can put the settings on part of the activity and the game fragment as the, as the other part of the activity. Does that make sense? It's really breaking it down so that I can rearrange it however I want to. All the examples we've gone over so far, we just had an activity that just did one thing. All right? Now we have the potential to take and break down and put multiple fragments on as part of one activity. So we went over last time the layout files associated with this somewhere. And we notice that our main activity is this guy. All right. Our main activity is this guy, which is really just sort of a frame where we're going to put our stuff in. We've defined uh, the coordinator layout. We've defined an app bar layout. That's the layout where we have the bar on the top, where we can put um, icons to do things if we want. Then we have a main content area. All right? That main content area, then, that's the guy that we have two of. We have one for landscape and one for 
portrait. So if we look at content main, it's still thinking this, which is really very odd. I don't know if my computer is tired today or what. I used last time. LCC, U, and A, U of A, that's not the one I want. My apologies, I actually didn't realize I had two versions out there. this guy and go in this guy. Let's open this one. <coughs> All right, now let's try this.
quickly. Okay. I lost my train of thought, but I was going to show the layout. That's right. Ah, there we go. Activity main really is just a framework for the activity. It includes the content main, and the content main is the one for which we have two of. One for landscape, one for portrait. The landscape, or the portrait one, if we notice, has a single fragment in it. Fragment. That's all it has. All right? So in other words, that's this content main, where I go here and that's all we have in there is the one fragment, the one piece of functionality. If we go to landscape though, we have this one, which has two fragments laid out in a linear, land, uh, linear uh, layout horizontally so the two fragments are right next to each other. All right. So this way, even though we're, re we're rearranging these little mini applications or little activities that we're calling fragments, we're putting them side by side, but we just treat it like just a module and we can arrange it however we want it. We conceivably, in another application, could have three fragments on an even bigger screen that we put side by side by side or arrange them however we want it to. But the idea is a fragment is written so it can work whether it's the only fragment within the activity or one of two fragments in activity. So it's almost like a little activity, little mini activity that only takes up par a portion of the screen. So let's look at these activities. Let's start out looking at the easier of the two activities, which is the settings activity. All right, uh, that is the settings activity fragment. The settings activity fragment is, inherits from preference fragment. All right, so preference fragment is a fragment that is built to do exactly what we're doing in this case. That is record the person's preferences for the application. And it's going to store that, that those uh, preferences in XML. So we open, all right, and add preferences from resource, and we pull up this preferences XML file. Notice that's not really a layout, it's in an XML file. And that includes the two preferences which we have. And it says where to get those from, from the string files. So we have two preferences. One is where you select from a list. Where do you get that list from? Well, you get it from the string array. Guesses list. And the other one is what regions we want. And that we also get from the string array. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Okay. Um, when I went to try this on my own, uh, the preferences has been degraded in, re in 29. Okay. And I'm taking a look at is the better approach to try, <coughs> but it also says if you use the one for 29, it may not always work on some of the lower ones. Right. And so do we just try and do we just change this build to something like 27 or 28? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's 
that's acceptable for, for okay. this. Yeah, uh, that is such a, I, I've been, this year is, is the year of the version problem for me. I've been running into ver, hitting version problems because this stuff evolves so quickly and they're constantly enhancing it, constantly adding stuff and they're deprecating stuff. Deprecated essentially means that it will go away and you probably shouldn't use it anymore because there's a better way to do it. But it, as long as you do that consciously and you know the consequences, then, then that's fine. But you notice there really isn't a lot of code in the fragment. The fact that it inherits from a preference fragment A lot of the functionalities do for you. You just define the XML in which that defines the preferences that you have for this application. So, this settings fragment will be in one of two places, right? Either it'll be part of the main activity. or it will be part of the settings activity. And the settings activity really doesn't do a lot with it other than just display it. look what it says. It has, there's two content mains, right? There's a content main for landscape and portrait. Content main for this has, what's the activity for it? The activity is the main activity fragment. So that's what is stored in this fragment, is a main activity fragment. Let's look at the main activity fragment. The main activity fragment has, gets the XML from fragment main. And fragment main is the guy that has all the buttons. So it's like, it's like a little trail you have to follow. The main activity doesn't have anything but the content view. The content view doesn't have anything but the fragments. <laughs> The fragments are the ones that have the XML that has the actual buttons and stuff. Is that really the best way to do it? To yeah. Have all the separation? Yeah, because cause why do you think that's the best way? I kind of feel like it's like a, in a database how you normalize to keep information separate so it doesn't. Well, it's, it it's, only does its thing. Yeah, like it's. It needs separate. Yeah, uh, that, I think that's a big part of it. Does anyone else want to add to that? What's the benefit of separating it like this? Usually the main benefit of separation is reusability. Okay. And that's exactly what we're doing with the fragment, right? Right. We're putting the fragment in two different places. So let's imagine, let's imagine if the code lives somewhere else. All right. If I put that XML code in here, in the content main, I would also have to put it in the other content main, right? Because sometimes you get the one content main, sometimes you get the other. So if I put it in the content main, I would have duplication of code because I would have to make sure that both content mains have it. However, if both content mains use the same activity, or say use the same fragment, if I put it in the fragment, 
So this one uses a fragment. This one uses a fragment. All right. So if the code's in the fragment, then I just have to have it in one place, and both of those use that fragment. We're treating the fragment as like lock, stock, and barrel. That's this segment of functionality. It's the UI and it's everything else about the processing of it. That we're going to go and pop that in. And we're going to... So the fragment really holds most of the main code. Right. For the other... Just kind of yeah, the other ones are... Yeah, the other ones just sort of form a shell that you put these fragments in. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in in standard Java, yeah, you create J panels, and and that's like a chunk of things. All right. And then you can treat that chunk as a unit and pop that there or pop that there. About the only difference I would say how this gets a little further is this fragment contains not just the UI portion of it, but it contains the code portion of it that does the magic with it. All right, so that's the one area that's a little different. But yeah, that's, that's a good analogy. Okay, so let's continue on with this. So we have these two fragments. The settings fragment, actually, we don't have to do a lot in. All right, because the segments fragment and the segment corresponding segment activity really doesn't do anything because most of the functionality lives in that preference fragment that this inherits from. So we get a lot of the functionality from that preference fragment. If you think about it, all right, preferences for most apps are going to be largely the same, right? You're going to have a list of things, all right? Each thing can have several options. And for any given thing, the options can be mutually exclusive, or you can pick several of them, right? So that's kind of how settings are, right? I guess there's, there's a few other possibilities, but by and large, that's how a lot of settings work, where you pick between options that are either mutually exclusive or not. Now, if we briefly look at the main activity, we do know that there's a little bit of code dealing with preferences there. We have a preference change listener. All right. Now, the reason for that is we want to be able to do this. If I run this app, and I go and change my preferences, all right, when I come back, if the preferences have changed, I want to start the quiz over again, right? Because if I change the preferences to just say I just want Asian countries or I only want two options instead of eight options or something like that. If I make those changes, I have to re-initialize the quiz, right? Because the rules of the quiz have changed, all right? So I have to re-initialize the quiz if the preferences change when I'm in this mode. And I also have to do it if I'm in this mode. So there's no difference in that regard. If I go in and change the preferences, wow, that was pretty ugly. I wonder what that was all about. If I go and change the preferences, then it changes the quiz again. All right, makes sense? So in the main activity, it says if I come back here and the preferences have changed, then I'm going to reset the quiz. 
So we've covered three out of the four Java objects, believe it or not. All right? Because in two of the three, there's, in one of them, there's almost nothing there. In the second one, there's almost nothing there. In the third one, there's only really a little bit of stuff. And that's to listen to see if the preferences have changed. Most of the action happen in the, happens in the main fragment. Most I feel like a sportscaster giving a halftime report of what happened in the first half. The settings activity fragment <coughs> doesn't have much in it because all that functionality is in the preference fragment that this inherits from. Okay, so we get all that functionality for free. All we got to do is say where the preferences come from, the XML. All right, so not much there. The settings activity, not much to do either. We just essentially uh, fill up the XML uh, layout <coughs> that contains that fragment, and we're good to go. The main activity. We don't really do a lot in there either. We grab the default preferences. We register a change listener. We check the size of the screen. If the size of the screen is a certain size, we force the, the device to be in portrait. We tell the main activity to initialize, the main activity fragment to initialize. And we create an options menu. I guess there's more in here than I thought. All right. But really, not a lot into this is, is earth shattering. Most of the work of this application, the game part, happens in the main activity fragment. So we'll come back to this probably next week after we talk about the main activity fragment more. All right. Here's where all the stuff is, and here's where the game is. All right. We inflate the fragment main, so that gives us the... Um, flag image and the eight buttons, or should I say up to eight buttons. All right, we are going to have a list of countries. We're going to have a list of, uh, we're going to have a random number generator. We're going to have a handler. All right. And then we define some animations. All right. <laughs> Remember, this is the fragment for the main activity. This is either what's getting loaded in here as part of the main activity, or in the case of it being portrait, it is the main activity. Let's look at how these animations work, and let's look at how these animations are called. All right, because this is kind of cool. The animations can be loaded in an XML file. So I have an incorrect shake animation. And if I look in the animation folder, I have something called incorrect shake. And I think, I, I think in past semesters I played with this a little bit and changed it. So there's like three, three shakes in it. All right. This specifies a series of translates. A translate in this animation means that I'm going to move it from one place to another. All right. The duration is how long this is going to take. And this is in milliseconds. So this is thousands of seconds. So 1,000 milliseconds means one second. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from 
x delta. All right. Remember, you probably had an algebra class somewhere where you did the, the Cartesian plane, right? Where you have the x and y coordinates. Y axis is vertical. X axis is horizontal. So if I'm moving around x delta, delta refers to change, all right? We're going to start with the position of x delta is zero. What does that mean? It's original position, all right? So we're going to start at where this originally is. And we're going to go to an x delta of minus 3% of my, I said minus 3, minus 5%. <coughs> and minus will take it to the left. So, if I get this wrong, it's going to move minus 5% to the left. It's going to start where it is, delta x equals 0. I'm going to do, go till delta x equals minus 5%. And that's going to take one second to do. The next translate is the next move in the sequence, all right? It also takes one second. And its offset is one second. What that means is this one doesn't start until a second into the animation. Another way to say that is this one doesn't start until this one finishes which kind of makes sense, right? If we're going back and forth like this, we have to be all the way over before we can start coming back, all right? We wouldn't want to start that at 500 milliseconds because it hasn't made its full destination there, all right? So this will go translate the duration of a second again from x minus 5% p, which is where it ended up here, <coughs> to x 5% p. So it's going to actually go from here, where it ended up, back past where it originally was, and it's going to end up here. So it's going to be going fast, right? Because it's covering a bigger distance. And then it goes from 5 p to negative 5 p again, so it's going to go backwards again. Now, I say that this animation has a repeat count of three. So it's going to go left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, three times. Okay? So let's get this wrong. Soviet Union. Left, right, left. Do it three times. That's weird. Not sure why it didn't do it three times, but <coughs> anyhow, that's the animation shake. Let's look at the code. Maybe we maybe we override it that. That's yeah. Why I was gonna mention three bounces. Yeah, maybe, or that might be something else. Actually, I, I'm I'm looking at that. Let's look at the animation for this. If we get it wrong, there is an animation out equal false. I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, we'll we'll have to take a look at that. Incorrect. All right. Notice how we associate this animation with a thing to animate. I take my view and I say start animation and I put the shake animation to it. And I also do that to the question number text. I didn't notice that before. Let's look. So if I get this wrong, 
I got a right one, you know. Let's say Hong Kong. Notice that is also moving. <coughs> That's a nice thing of these XML animations, is you're describing a behavior. Move a little bit this way, move a little bit that way, move a little bit that way. That's what a translate is. All right? We could, do you think we could make it go vertically instead of horizontally? Sure. Just set it on the y -axis. Yeah, set it on the y axis. How do we put a little pause in between? Change the duration. Well, we could change the duration, or we could change the offset. So this goes for a second. This goes for a second and starts after a second. I can make this start after one and a half seconds. And I can make this start after two and a half seconds. Is translate the only thing we can do? No. This is fun. This is where I usually end up spending like hours, all right, because who cares about the rest of the stuff? We can make these things spin, all right? Let's look up Android XML animation. Fade in animation. I'm just going to keep adding stuff here, even though this won't be a very user friendly, effective animation. This is just to demonstrate stuff. So we're going to take another second, and I'm going to go from 0 to alpha 1. And I'm going to do that at the end, so I'm going to do that after 3.5 seconds. something up with that. Oh, that must have happened immediately. Let's do this. The alpha is another thing that you could do. Hmm. Screwing something up with this. doing it the way that I wanted to. 
Um, let's try getting rid of these translates to see if they're somehow interfering. Okay, there we go. And it did it three times because I said the duration is three times. It must be, yeah, it might have, maybe there was an issue mixing the translate and the alpha. I don't know. Uh, fade out, cross fading. Zoom in. Zoom out. Rotate. Place this with rotate. show them for getting a question wrong, right? Why is it rotating like that? Why is it rotating kind of goofy? Because rotating around the pointer. Yeah. It's rotating around the pointer and we'd have to figure out a way to... It's going from 0 to 360, but it is... I think that pivot is set incorrectly. Although it does say 50%. I would think that that would do it in the middle. Slide, bounce, and so on. Let's go back. The one thing, the last thing I want to show before we finish here is let me hit undo a couple dozen times to get this back to where we were. People had mentioned the bouncing. This is what determines that. That says if it goes, uh, if it slides and stops, if it slides and stops, or if it slides and when it hits it does a little bounce. So you can have it accelerate and slow down when it stops, accelerate and slow down when it stops, all based on the interpolator that you use. So let's just make this a linear interpolator. What that will do is it'll just smoothly move it over to the right and left. All right. Still don't know why it's not doing it three times, but my suggestion with this is just have a blast, right? Uh, this is kind of fun stuff to do. Um, this is this is not necessarily good design principles, but look for opportunities to use this just so that you understand it and know how it works, right? 
I mean, you could play a blackjack game without having this happen, or you could play your your concentration memory game without having this happen. But yeah, might as well, you know, if you pick two things that uh, that match, two cards that match in your memory game, have them both spin. All right. Once you define the XML transformation, remember, you can apply that to as many things as you want. All right. You could do it to the buttons. You could do it to anything, right? Uh, you could have things fade out. That would be kind of cool if they picked two cards that matched, have them fade out and disappear because they're kind of like they're leaving the, the playing surface, all right? In the blackjack game, you can have the cards fade in. You know, a lot of things that you can do with that. All right, we're going to spend at least a little while next time on the main fragment activity, probably hit the main activity some too. <coughs> Most of the work is going to be in the main activity fragment, but again, we'll look at the main activity as well because there is a little more logic in there than I thought.